Bang bang. Bang bang. <laughs> Did you know it was it? Bang 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 bang. <laughs> bang 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 bang. Um, today we are talking about a very interesting topic, and the topic is what is the difference between a fiduciary and an agent? Do tell. Yeah. Well, <laughs> fiduciary is a funny word, right? It is. Fiduciary is um, so essentially what the the context is as a professional when you're working with a professional, a fiduciary is someone who is committing to put your uh, interests and your commitments ahead of their own. So. They're doing what's in the best interest for the client, and they're also subscribing to a high standard of ethics. Yes. Um, and so there's actually like a certification process, um, and there is a um, yeah, there's a process that you go to to really be able to con co consider and call yourself a fiduciary. Right. Because um, you can't just say you're a fiduciary. It's then. crazy to me though that people were not. Like, I mean, like if I'm hiring someone to do my, you know, my financial planning, that they don't have my financial interest at heart. Yeah. The, the, like the, yeah, it's weird to consider that there's, you mean there's a non fiduciary you mean there's yeah. people who are doing things that are not in my business, right, right. right? It was a pretty crazy uh, um, thing, and so there was a uh, recent ruling in the Department of uh, Labor, right? Uh, Department of Labor, yeah, that required essentially, you know, financial planners to really subscribe to a higher standard of ethics and really aligning um, with what clients were interested in. Right. Um, now, on the flip side, what an agent is, um, they don't necessarily need to subscribe to you know a fiduciary standard um, and uh, an agent is typically someone who is licensed to be able to sell particular products whether it's insurance or annuities or whatever the case is um, and they receive a commission from the sale of that product right so you can see where the lines will be a little blurred if someone is a fiduciary but if they have two options to sell a product to a client one maybe give them a higher commission than the other you know the and, and they both do the same, the fiduciary needs to do the one that is not going to have them generate as much money right. on the commission. Right. Um, so uh, the broad strokes, an agent is commission based um, and a fiduciary is someone who really does have the client's best interest uh, at heart and oftentimes in terms of compensation that looks like them being um, fee based only or um, working for a fixed fee. So regardless of what they're selling you, they're still receiving the same amount of money. Hmm. Paying for the same, you know, you're paying for the same service. So if I'm, uh, and let's take it a step back here. If I'm, sure. if 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 I am a fellow explorer, someone who is on the path of mastery, I, I've yep. hired a financial advisor. Yep. Is it uh, safe for me to ask, or is it would it be appropriate for me to ask? Are you a fiduciary? Yes, I, it is definitely safe, and I think especially with the ruling um, and as the you know the average investor or um, person seeking financial help is becoming more and more educated. Um, financial planners are actually like, not necessarily, they're they're expecting that question actually. Yeah. Um, and for me personally, I used to be a financial planner, a fiduciary financial planner. So I actually appreciated it when clients would ask that because it showed that they are definitely committed to their financial well-being. Yeah. Um, but I also knew that you know, if I were working with myself or if I'm working with someone, that someone who is a fiduciary shouldn't be upset. That someone's asking them, "Hey, right. hey fiduciary." Right, right. Um, if there is, that's probably like a red flag, or at least like a you know a pink flag. It's you know, yeah, like, hmm. yeah. Why are you getting you know? If you really are in my best interest, what's the big issue? Right. Because um, the answer to that, if someone is a fiduciary, is yes, I am a fiduciary. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then it ends the conversation. Yeah. Right. Um, so to answer your question, for a fellow explorer, yeah, I would, it, it's definitely a question to ask someone that you're considering working with or already working with already. Um, if they are a fiduciary, because um, you definitely want to be working with people or someone who has your best interests at heart. Yes. So what I heard recently though was the fiduciary rule that was passed down by the Department of Labor. Mm. Um, it's actually being delayed mm. by President Trump, who had called for a review. Interesting. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, it was implemented. Uh, it was in full effect as of January first, twenty eighteen. Mm -hmm. But I think it's now kind of under review. So we'll see what happens. I still think it's super valuable to ask, you know, are you a fiduciary? And I would assume that, like you said, if someone is acting in your best interest, mm -hmm. they will actually be like, yes, absolutely, I am a fiduciary. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And not have an issue with it. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, the, the financial planners and advisors in our firm that we were working with were really happy that this was happening because essentially uh, raise the standard for client service. Sure. Um, and so I could imagine that, you know, firms who didn't necessarily have uh, the fiduciary requirement yep. were upset or 
you know, a little bit triggered because it's like, oh, now I need to go through certain certifications or now I need to operate differently than what I used to. Yep. So instead of it being commission focused, you mean I need to focus on, you know, serving clients? Right. Um, now, however, with that to say, I, I kind of, you know, say that tongue in cheek, but there are going to be certain products or people that are fiduciaries and they do sell you a product that also in turn gives them a commission. Yeah. So it's just the con- like the context behind it of, hey, I'm, I may be selling you something, but it's still in your best interest. Right. Yeah. So it's not to just take a, a jab at all people who are agents. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, it's interesting because the, uh, the difference between 1% as an example, Mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, there was a book that, uh, Tony Robbins put out not too long ago. It was called money master the game. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about the the fees that are charged in uh, mutual funds as an example, um, can eradicate someone's wealth over time Mm -hmm. or, or substantially alter the exponential growth of a, of a fund, right? right? Yeah. And so he was saying, get, get in the weeds a little bit about what are the fees that are charged on certain investments that you're uh, involved in. Mm-hmm. And I think ultimately what he was saying was work with a fiduciary who has, has your financial interest at heart versus yeah. additional fees and commissions and whatnot. Yeah. 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 And I mean, finance is so complicated already. You want to be working with someone who does have your best interest at heart because you, yes. I mean, you never really know, right? Like right. even in the industry, it was just I didn't fully, fully understand everything. Sometimes right. it bring on the compliance team. It's like, what is actually going yeah. on here? Yeah. So I heard this the other day. This is kind of a, a sidebar tangent, but um, I, I met this woman who had worked at a uh, a, a major bank mm-hmm. who has gone through a lot of scandal. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to say who they are, but uh, their stage a stagecoach is their logo, and uh, so they. This this woman who worked at the bank uh-huh. had multiple accounts opened in her name mm. while she worked there, mm. and this is what they had gotten hand slapped for was opening accounts in people's names, uh-huh. um, unbeknownst to the client. Yeah. So she said she started getting uh, fees and charges for these accounts that were open, mm. so like an annual recu- recurring fee. Yeah. And she said, I've never authorized any of these, and I work here. Mm. You know, how did this happen? Oh wow. So I think there's, uh, going back to this idea that there are financial firms that have a client's best interest at heart, mm-hmm. and then there are firms out there that are just hit trying to hit sales quotas sure. yeah, yeah. and are doing anything possible. Um, I go back several years to a major, major investment house that's pretty well known and in almost every small community out there. And um, they were totally and closely aligned with one fund family. Mm. And so even if another fund family made more sense for their clients, mm. they sent them to this one fund family because there was more of a bump yep. on that particular account. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. That would, be, that would, that would not be a fiduciary act. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think um, to underscore what you were saying, you know, another way to look at fiduciary versus agent um, what I found is that you know agents can be a little more uh, transactionally focused, right? Hitting that sales quota, whatever the case is. Yep. Where fiduciaries are people who are much more relationship focused. Yes. They really care about you know what's important to you, your values, your goals. Um, and there's actually you know for uh, one of the things you can ask a financial planner or advisor is if they are a CFP, certified financial uh, planner, meaning that they've actually gone through extensive testing and studying and case studies. Um, and also subscribe to, uh, you know, moral code of ethics. Yeah. Um, and that's just a, a very easy, quick way to tell if someone is a fiduciary. If yeah. they are a CFP, that is, that is a sign that they are a fiduciary. Yeah. Very cool. Yep. So here's the challenge. Um, if you are working with a financial planner already, ask them if they are a fiduciary, find out if they are fee only, or if they're getting, uh, trails and other, uh, commissions, uh, on the, the products and services they're selling you. Um, your goal really should be to be working with a fiduciary mm-hmm. in my mind. Yep. So um, if you're not working with someone like that, do a little bit of research, find someone locally that could do that. One of the groups that we are really fond of is the XY Planning Network. Mm. XYPN. Yeah, yep. XYPN. Um, and these are all folks who are working with Gen X and Gen Y, uh, but almost, I believe almost all of them are just fee only financial planners. Yep. I think, uh, yeah. And to also be, if you want to search for a financial planner for them to put you put a financial planner on there, they need to have the CFP. Okay. Yeah. So there's a particular standard that they do have. Um, so yeah, that's awesome. Very cool. That's a great resource. Yes. Hopefully uh, you've been enlightened a little bit on what a fiduciary is and what they're not. The difference between a fiduciary and an agent. And uh, you can take some action to make sure that your money is working as hard as you do. Mm. We will see you next time.